left your first husband because you were looking for someone, quote, more lucrative. You were talking about massages, hair, and nails. Well, aren't those essentials? Are you kidding me? And what if your marriage was based on lies? I didn't find out about Carl having an addiction to porn until after we were married. So he told you, hey, I'm not really looking at those, they're just pop-ups. They just pop up on the screen. I get rid of them as fast as I can. <laughs> Coming up, let's do it. I want you to get excited about your life. What are you thinking? If you're going to talk to me, you're going to have to be honest. We can do this. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Talking to all the newlyweds that are out there, Britney Spears, J Lo, <laughs> all of you, you need to watch today's show. We're talking to couples who have been married for just months and admit that the honeymoon period of their marriage is definitely over. <laughs> way over. I always say you have to earn your way out of a marriage, but are people getting married for the right reasons in the first place? All newlyweds experience the typical up and downs in the first year of marriage, but we're talking about relationships that may have gone too far to be saved, even though it's just a short period of time. Now, Nicole claims her husband, Jack, hasn't given her the wonderful life he promised, filled with lavish homes, fancy cars, and the best of everything. Take a look. When I walked down the aisle to marry Jack, I believed that I was walking into a wonderful life with financial security. He promised me a nice house, a couple of nice cars, a Mercedes, weekend getaways whenever we wanted. I feel misled. The credit cards are maxed out. The Audi was repossessed. Bankruptcy is imminent. We have no money. Nicole's lifestyle expectations are pretty high. I feel like I'm not being cared for. Our life was a whirlwind. Our first date was shopping in Beverly Hills, eating at nice places. Just on a whim, we went to New York, Nantucket, Kenya, on a safari. We went on a hot air balloon ride that ended up in a champagne breakfast. Everything was completely romantic. I felt that this was definitely the life that I wanted to live forever. She was the woman that I'd been looking for and just praying they would come into my life. I felt so pampered. Now it's, it's all disappeared. I didn't realize that he couldn't afford what he was doing. I just had my first bath. I think that having a baby complicated everything. We're both committed to her being at home and taking care of, of Anya. Sometimes I feel that Nicole's love is different than it used to be. We are borrowing an 84 Volvo that has over 200,000 miles on it. I am so embarrassed driving the Volvo. <laughs> I have not gotten my hair done in six months. I used to be able to get waxings and massages every other week. I don't have any of that now. We splurged by getting a Mountain Dew to, <laughs> to share. I suffer every day because I can't buy anything. The essentials. I'm getting embarrassed returning things time after time again. And we're so short on money that we're returning items in order to buy things that, that we need on a day-to-day -day basis. I love Jack, but I can't take this much longer. This is definitely not the type of life that I want. Dr. Phil, can you please help us? Well, I'm a little confused here. Um, you said you're suffering every day because you can't buy things. Right, that's right. That's an interesting definition of suffering. <laughs> Well, we can't buy the essentials. We can't buy things well, that Well, that's not to... what you were talking about. I mean, let's be honest. Right, right. What oh. were you talking about? You were talking about massages and hair and nails and all of that? Well, aren't those essentials? Uh, <laughs> well, it depends. Uh, what, what was your motive for marrying to begin with? Besides the fact that, we're, that we were very much in love, we did have a little um, baby on the way. You were married before. 
I believe I'm quoting now that you left your first husband because you were looking for someone, quote, more lucrative. That's correct than him. Did I read that right? <laughs> yes, you did, I'm sure. Are you kidding me? In my first marriage, I didn't have the life that I had hoped for. And so obviously when Financially? that... Financially? Right. <clears throat> when I got married again, I was hoping for a better life. What do you think about all of this? Well, when we met, um, the love that we had for each other was just absolutely incredible. And I wanted to do everything that I possibly could for her. And that meant... <clears throat> going the extra mile, that meant uh, putting things on credit cards, just spoiling her to death and doing what she needed and what she really wanted. I didn't know that so much of her happiness seemed to lie on the financial security. Well, apparently you did know that because you spent yourself, you didn't have enough confidence in yourself and your ability to win her over and make her happy that you spent yourself totally into debt in order to ensure that you could meet her expectations. Isn't that right? I think so, yeah. I mean, you took her on a safari, hot air balloons, champagne. Do you watch a lot of TV? Yes, I, I do. I mean, do you really <laughs> think that's how people live their whole lives? You think he's going to, like, take you to your nail appointment in a hot air balloon every day? <laughs> I think your expectancies are really unbelievable. I mean, what you're saying that, oh, my God, I'm so horrified that I'm having to drive this Volvo. I'm so humiliated. If I was going to be embarrassed, I don't think it would be about that. <laughs> I think it would maybe be about the fact that you're saying I was looking for a more lucrative deal and you ain't cash flowing like I thought you were. I mean, do you think that's a reasonable approach to marriage? No, and there are other reasons why I married him. I mean, he's a wonderful, wonderful husband. He takes care of me and everything. Um, uh -huh. But I was just hoping for uh -huh. a better life financially, looking for more security. Okay. And, I mean, let's look at the flip side of this. Have you ever heard of bait and switch? Mm -hmm. Bait and switch is when you show them one thing, they sign up and you give them another. Right. <laughs> exactly. Didn't you kind of bait and switch this deal? I mean, I mean, safaris and Nantucket and L.A. and New York and all of that, like, hey, come on, baby, we're going to go rock and roll. <laughs> and then you get married and she has to split a Mountain Dew? <laughs> I mean, that, that is a... Were you honest in, in what you presented? Well, I thought. I thought that we would be able to maintain and I'd be able to maintain that. Look, um, this isn't magic. It's math. I mean, did you... Yeah. You know what your income is, you know what your credit card debt was going to be, and you knew those bills were coming due. Income so you've gone from two incomes to one, mm -hmm. didn't make the job change, didn't and added change. a baby. Yes. Okay. And, but that doesn't count. Okay. D d hold that thought. All right. I I'm going to take a break here while they gather their thoughts. And we're going to figure out what drove Nicole to say she would never have sex with her husband again as long as she lives. We'll be right back. Which is a little similar. Coming up. The last gift that Jack gave me was a shawl. He brought that, brought it home. Then he said, we're going to have to return that because we don't have money. And later. The major lies that I told Letitia have been, one, that I was legally separated, two, that I was divorced. And there's days that I actually regret the fact that Carl and I are married. This year on our weekend away, Jane and I wanted adventure. I didn't want my asthma to hold me back. Bye, honey. You wanna go where you wanna go. Do what you wanna do. There's a different kind of asthma controller. Singulair. It's not a steroid. It's a once-a-day tablet that helps provide effective 24-hour control. And the same Singulair is also approved to help relieve a broad range of seasonal allergy symptoms. Singulair will not replace fast-acting inhalers for sudden symptoms. Continue taking your other asthma medicines unless your doctor tells you to stop or change the dose. If asthma symptoms get worse, contact your doctor at once. Side effects are generally mild and vary by age and may include headache, ear infection, sore throat, and upper respiratory infection. doctor about once a day Singulair. Asthma control that can help you breathe easier. They read. They watch. They need. They chop. 
They're foodies, and they're very selective about their food. No wonder they love Campbell's Select collection of soups. New Select Three Cheese Mushroom Ravioli with Vegetables is a luscious blend of Fontina, Ricotta, and Romano cheese. Plump portobello mushrooms stuffed in tender pillows of pasta. For a taste you can't get from Progresso, a taste unmistakably select. Select the best from Campbell's. It's time to save big at the Robinson's May 15-hour sale this Friday and Saturday. Get unbeatable prices on exciting corduroy for her. And 25% off the newest fur. The latest men's leather jackets are 40 to 50% off. Get lowest prices on Ralph Lauren towels. Plus 40 to 50% off every bed in the bag. There's a preview day Friday and use your extra 15% off entire purchase bonus coupons. Get prices that can't be beat Friday and Saturday. Only at Robinson's May. HMO bureaucrats are overruling the doctors. It takes you months to get an appointment, and dealing with insurance companies can be a nightmare. It's time for a real patient's bill of rights so that healthcare decisions are made by our doctors, not bureaucrats. Let's make health insurance tax deductible and get seniors real help with their drug costs. To me, it's basic. People ought to be able to get good health care without going bankrupt. I'm Barbara Boxer, and I approve this message. Our sex life has changed from fire to ice. Now it's non-existent. Making love is very difficult for me. I am shutting down. I am numb. Well, today we're talking with newlywed couples who are already contemplating divorce. Jack and Nicole want to know if their marriage has a fighting chance. Now, you, you guys are now having sexual problems, right? You just aren't motivated there. You say it's because you can't get past the harsh words she's saying about the financial situation. Not only the financial situation, but also other areas, yeah. Okay. When I'm really upset and I'm hurt and it's just piling up and piling up, I just lash out and I get very verbal. <laughs> and it yeah. tends like, to hurt what do you his say? feelings. What, what do you say to him? Well, things like, I should never have married you. What did I get myself into? So what do you want? I just want to feel that magic again that we that we used to feel. Yeah. And do you need the lifestyle in order to feel that? You need to feel the pampering, the trips, the resorts, the massages, the you know, <laughs> would that light the fire? The lifestyle would help, but I think the fact that we don't have the lifestyle that we were used to, that we started out with, mm -hmm. and the lifestyle that we were expecting, I think the fact that we don't have that puts a strain on our relationship. So then we're fighting and we're stressed and then there's no connection. So if that doesn't change, you want out. There are many times when I when I just want out, yes. I think about it a lot. Yeah. And how about you? You want out as well? No. You're not wanting out. I really want to save this and do whatever I need to do to, to, to make this work. OK. Well, here's the reality, OK? Would you like a little reality check yes. here? <laughs> you guys, you've hit the wall financially. You're heading into bankruptcy, right? We are. And this is going to be a long, climb out of this. You've gone from two income to one. You're a stay-at-home mom, at least for now. You got a lot of debt accumulated here and virtually no assets. That is correct. So that means you're starting underwater. So I don't expect to see you sailing off the coast of Nantucket soon, okay? So where does that leave you? Well, it's hard because we loved going on weekend getaways, and, and that was where our we okay, just... but we're not talking about we. We're talking about you. We're talking about you in saying that's not going to happen. That Do you acknowledge that's not in your future? Correct. That this affluent African safari hot air balloon champagne breakfast on the heels of a trip to Nantucket is not in your immediate future? It's not in the immediate future, no. Okay. You know, the Sultan of Brunei is probably not doing that today. <laughs> uh, I mean, are you looking for another more lucrative player now? No, I am not looking around. Um, I just want us to be connecting again. Even despite the money, I, I, I don't want the money to interfere with our passion. And OK, our well, that, that won't happen because there's not any. <laughs> OK? The money won't be a problem because there's not any. As old-fashioned as it sounds, we're going to have to build this marriage on a partnership. We're going to have to build this marriage on commitment and love and mutual support. 
commitment to our child and creating a life together. And that's going to take patience and maturity and sacrifice. Are those words in your vocabulary as you think about this? No, seriously, as you think about it, because I don't think you thought about marriage in terms of sacrifice. You said, I didn't want to have to make sacrifices. I did not want to have to worry about money. I don't want to have to be not buying a sweater because we can't afford it until we pay the electric bill. I didn't want it, didn't want it, didn't want it. <laughs> did not want it. Okay? But that's what you got. I'm used to being pampered. But I've just told you that's over. Yes. <laughs> okay? You're probably going to have to work. You're probably going to have to live in smaller houses and drive older cars and live on restrictive budgets for a period of time in hopes that you can begin to accumulate some money for your child's future, not to be confused with your pampering. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. If you can afford it, knock yourself out, but you can't. Are you prepared to sign on for that or not? Because that's the reality of where you are. I think in my mind, I know what needs to be done, but when it comes down to emotions, I, I, it's hard for me to do. Is that a no? <laughs> yes, I can do that. No, you can do it. I can. I mean, really, because, I mean, this is about growing up, right? When you grow up, you realize that you don't get to do everything you want to do whenever you want to do it. You have to make sacrifices. And this marriage won't work if you keep telling him he's no good and worthless because he can't take you everywhere you want to go. And you can't keep trying to buy her happiness and commitment because it's you can't afford it. I mean, she's got a high standard here. And you help create that high standard. You guys need to get honest with yourselves and say, you know what? If we're going to do this, we need to start over. We just need to start over. We need to be financially responsible. We need to get high on each other. We need to get high on our family. We need to value things that we can create within our lifestyle and budget and not worry about the jet set. All right, coming up, a self-admitted sex addict who has to cry in order to get her husband to have sex with her. We'll talk to them when we come back. So, I'm just telling you what the reality is, and the sooner you acknowledge that, to cry to get sex. <laughs> Roy fell asleep on my wedding night. This is not the first time Tammy's cried to have sex. She cries three to four times out of the week. Closed captioning provided by... Don't let Anna have all the fun. Go to TrimSpa.com and order TrimSpa X32 today. Also available at fine retailers everywhere. So what sounds good to you tonight? We're cooking and we're carving. During Carver's Choice at Hometown Buffet, our chefs are always carving up something tender and juicy. Different choices every night, like pork loin, roasted turkey, or a brand new beef brisket. So what are we carving tonight? The best way to find out? Come to Hometown Buffet. Home style, your style. Coming up after Dr. Phil, more bad news on the local flu front. What health officials announced today and the length some people are going to just to get a flu shot. Plus, a local high school principal at the center of a new firestorm. Why dozens of parents are demanding that he's fired. Then, former First Lady Hillary Clinton in the middle of a whirlwind tour through Southern California. See who she's meeting with, a live report. And serious new warnings about the risks of antidepressant use among teenagers. What you need to know today at 5 on the Channel 4 News. There's a lot of noise out there about Indian gaming. Racetracks and card rooms fighting with Indian tribes. It's time to turn down the volume. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a way for tribal governments to pay what's fair, like an amount equal to what California companies pay in taxes? And don't you wish we could keep gambling limited to reservations and out of our neighborhoods? Well, I read the voter guide, and there is a way. It's Prop 70. Prop 70 is fair. It calls for Indian tribes to pay the same percentage the companies pay. And the tribal governments can live with that because they're treated like everyone else. Teachers and parents like Prop 70 because it'll help education and help solve our budget mess without treating Indians unfairly. Prop 70 will raise $2 billion to help with health care and the environment. I hope you'll join me and other Californians in voting yes on Prop 70. It's fair to everyone.
Jennifer Lopez's union to restaurant manager Ohani Noah only lasted nine months. And she filed for divorce from Chris Judd just eight months after tying the knot with him. Drew Barrymore and Tom Green's marriage lasted only five months. Britney's New Year's marriage to pal Jason Alexander lasted 55 hours before it was annulled. I wanted to do something wild and crazy, and um, I wanted to get married. Well, we're talking to newlyweds who are already struggling to keep their marriage together. Tammy claims her six-month marriage to Roy lacks both attention and sex, the two things she says she needs the most. I feel like it could be any man's dream in the bedroom except for my husband. Tammy would like to have sex seven days a week. She could have it. She's just a fiend for it. Yes, I consider myself a sex addict. I'll do anything to get him in the mood. I have tried the lingerie. Little tiny tank tops may be thinking he's like a simple kind of man. Or maybe he would like the kind of like Dominic shirts, I'm a bad girl corset kind of girl. Nothing works. I work 12, 14 hour days and I'm really tired. She's really needy, she needs attention a lot. She fell asleep on our wedding night. I had basically to cry to get, you know, sex. We've been married for six months. It's still that way. My past fiance, Julian and I had a bond like no other. We bonded in a way that I've never had. Julian is what my definition of a soulmate was. In November of 2003, Julian got into a car accident and love of my life died. Like she has a box of pictures and, you know, little things that he gave her. I don't understand why she would need that stuff. I visit Julian's grave site every major holiday. Now, I was in the car once when we did go. Every night I think that, you know, my soulmate died, my sex life died with him. I think our marriage is in trouble. If I don't satisfy Tammy's needs, I think she might cheat on me. I'd hate to lose her. Dr. Phil, I want you to help bring passion into my love life and my marriage. Well, what do you think's going on? Why do you think you two aren't connecting the way you hope to? Um, I think maybe that, um, it's a combination of him working, you know, between 10 and 15 mm -hmm. hours a day. I guess we're just two different people when it comes. I mean, his need for me, sex and physical love and attention is maybe, like, down here, and mine is, like, way high. It's, like, it's a necessity. What, what do you think the problem is? Um, I think I just don't give Tammy enough attention, and, you know, I'm, I'm thinking in my mind I just don't tell her, and that's, like, my big problem. She's saying that she has a greater sexual appetite than you do. She's great. <laughs> Way more than me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, no, no debate there, right? Yeah, no, hands down, she wins. OK. But now, how do you feel about her comments about her ex fiance Julian? It bothers me, you know, a little bit. And, and it's interesting to me that you're saying that he was your connected one. He was your soulmate. He was your sexual soulmate. If I understand this right, you had split from Julian mm -hmm. before he was hit by the, yeah. the, the truck yes. and, and killed, uh -huh. and in fact had gotten pregnant with Roy's baby. Mm -hmm. So if he was this absolute destiny in your life this was this was who you were meant to be with mm -hmm. how come you left him and got involved with roy everybody i think um doesn't have the perfect relationship um we had a silly i mean just one of those really silly fights that you just blow up out of just out of nowhere and um we decided that since we were together for two years and that we were both still young maybe we should take some time apart that was his idea and he, a day, two days later, called me back regretting it. But I said, no, you wanted time. I was being stubborn. You wanted time, I'm going to give you time. And you've said that you couldn't marry your soulmate, so you just married Roy. Well, I, we were... How do you feel when she says stuff like that? It bothers me. I mean, I can't, can't lie about it, it does. I just... Well, I don't want you to lie about it. I mean, it would bother anyone. I mean, you're saying that he doesn't seem to pay attention to you, he's not plugged into you, he's not connected to you, he's not sexually motivated, and you've just said, I couldn't marry who I wanted to, so I'm going to marry you. Well, not... We were pregnant at the time, um, so I thought for the best of my family, since 
I had, I was trying to get over the fact that, you know, my fiance died and I just said that, you know, I wanted to make a healthy, stable family for my son. And I love, I mean, I love Roy. I, I truly, truly do. He's a wonderful man. He treats me very well. It's just what I need so much of, which is sex attention or whatever it may be. It's like he does not give it. It's frustrating. I mean, I, I know I can work yeah. through this, but it's just frustrating. All right. Uh, all right. <laughs> all right, next, Tammy confesses to us something her own husband doesn't know she did. We're going to find out what that was after this. Goya, reminding you every authentic Latino rice dish is only a box away with Goya rice mixes. Mmm, what a way to Goya. Right now at Pearl Vision, save $100 on eyeglasses. But hurry, sale ends soon. Nobody cares for eyes more than Pearl. Introducing Scent Stories by Febreze, a whole new way to experience sense. Because with Sense Stories, you can play Sense, like you play music. Every reusable Sense Stories disc plays five complimentary scents. With a new scent every half hour. And a whole new experience with every disc. Just push play, and you're there. New Sense Stories by Febreze. Two cows in the kitchen making more <laughs> Introducing the Little Touch Leap Pad system from LeapFrog. Little Touch magically brings story time to life while teaching important early learning skills. And with three Grow With Me levels, the learning and laughing will last for years to come. Create your own touching moments with the complete Little Touch library from LeapFrog Baby. you want are at the Mervyn's Half Yearly Shoe Sale. And right now you'll find all the latest boots and shoes on sale. Don't miss it. Mervyn's. Our family-run restaurant is doing okay. It's well enough to provide benefits for our workers. But Prop 72 could cost me over $100,000 a year. I'm going to have to raise prices or lay off workers. Maybe both. We've got a good private health plan. But Prop 72 could force us into a government-run plan. And who knows what those bureaucrats will come up with. Prop 72 kills jobs and could force people out of health plans they want. No on 72. Try different tender and juicy entrees every night during Carver's Choice at Hometown Buffet. Like our brand new beef brisket. Home style, your style. The critics are unanimous. Shall We Dance is the feel-good movie of the year. This fall, join the celebration. Shall We Dance, rated PG-13, now playing everywhere. I got a confession to make. I was so sexually disturbed and frustrated that I actually called a chat line. That scares me. I shouldn't have to call a phone chat line to get some attention. I mean, my husband should give it to me. That was Tammy, who is desperate to get any type of attention in her marriage. Now, we're talking to couples who have just tied the knot in recent months and already have become strangers in their own marriage. Now, while Tammy admits she settled, she feels like she's settled in this marriage, Roy still feels that Tammy is the one for him. Now, you can't expect a husband to be excited and supportive and attracted to you when you're saying things like marrying you was settling. It isn't what I wanted, I just settled. Uh, I, I had a great soulmate out here, and it's real easy to fantasize about how perfect everything was when somebody's gone, mm -hmm. and when there's distance between you, you know, we kind of, that selective memory, we remember all the good things and none of the other things, like, in fact, he was very jealous, correct? Uh, yeah. And, I mean, you, you had tension there. And, yeah. 
and, and, and now you, you have some, some stability in that regard. There, there yes. were some pluses then, there are some pluses now. Yes. Okay, but you're, I mean, this is an insult to your husband, and it's like you're getting in bed with a ghost every night. It's like there's you, there's you, and there's Julian in bed with you at night. I mean, is that, is that okay? Are you getting tired of, of Julian? Are you getting tired of hearing about all of this? It, it bothers I tell her it doesn't bother me, but it does. It does. It, I, I know you, 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 you kind of are slow to say that. I don't understand why. Uh, just, I keep her, you know, just try to keep her happy. What is up with this about, <laughs> you know, let's tell them what they want to hear so we can keep them happy. How does that seem to be working for you? It's not. I mean, it's and, not you know, working it's, for you. <laughs> I mean, really, it's, it's not working for you at all. And, and, I mean, you guys, there are a lot of things you can do, but you've got to turn towards each other here. You, I mean, you, you've got to decide that you're going to begin to talk about these things. And you've got to decide, look, if, if this is a settle and, and you don't want to be here, then you owe it to him, let him go. No man wants to be sitting there with some woman who's thinking about her dead ex fiance and listening to what a great lover he was and, what, and, and how wonderful he connected in bed and how all of this was great, and then you expect him to go, oh, well, here's the second team, put me in. <laughs> you know, that is, I mean, right? Yeah. Am I saying it right? Yes, very, right on the money. I think you could go stop 100 cars on Melrose, get the men out of the cars, and ask them this question. Would you be attracted to, passionate about, and pursuing your new bride if she was crying about the man she wished she had married instead of you. Now, what do you think they would say to that? No. I don't think they would find that a real turn on. No. I don't think they would find that a real motivator, correct? Is that a problem? <laughs> Very correct, yes. Okay, and I'm not saying there aren't other things you need to do. Oh, there's a lot. I mean, you're working too much. You know, if you're working 15 hours a day and you got a new wife and baby at home, you, you ain't there enough. You need to get involved. I mean, if that means you need to make some financial sacrifices to be more involved, you can do that. Uh, you say you're tired all the time. You know, then get in shape. You know, take better care of yourself, cardiovascularly, physically, weight-wise, every way possible. Take care of yourself. You know, love yourself more. Take care of yourself better. And, you know, get, and don't be so absorbed into work all the time. And invest more in your wife. And you need to bury the dead. The truth is, that was somebody you cared about, and tragedy struck. Tragedy struck. And do you have a grieving process to go through with that? Of course you do. And, and I'm not saying that you should, should carve that memory out of your life. I'm just saying you should carve the presence out of your marriage. I don't think you're a sex addict. I think you're starved for attention. And I think if you will focus here and invest here, you two aren't so far gone that you can't change this. You really aren't. But you've got to hear what I'm saying and do some of the things I'm saying. All right. Coming up, a new bride who says her husband has been lying to her since they met. Lying to her from day one. We're going to talk about that and what it'll do to a relationship when we come back. I think the habitual lying started when I was married the first time, and it transferred over into the relationship between me and Letitia. I tell Carl all the time how he has screwed up my life. It's time to save at the Robinson's May 15-hour sale. Get unbeatable prices on exciting corduroy, cool fur, and the latest leather jackets. Use your extra 15% off entire purchase bonus coupons Friday and Saturday, 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. Only at Robinson's May. Carla Nino, president of the California State PTA, talks about Proposition 68. The special interests behind Prop 68 are trying to mislead voters. They want you to believe that 68 would help our schools, but that claim is completely false. 68 won't give one dime to education. It will hurt our kids and it will hurt our schools by adding millions in new administrative costs. Please join the California State PTA by voting no on 68. Stop this deceptive measure. Thank you. 68, a fair share for California. 70, all Indian casinos pay their fair share. Make no mistake, 68 and 70 won't pay their fair share. It's time for straight talk about these initiatives. 
Both are from special interests, looking for special treatment. Both will cause a massive expansion of casinos across the state. Allow me to negotiate the fair share, the billions from Indian gaming our state deserves. Vote no on 68 and 70. They are wrong for California. My most important role lately is as an advocate for patients and for finding new cures for diseases. That's why I'm asking you to vote yes on Proposition 71, the Stem Cell Research Initiative. 71 will support research to find cures for diseases that affect millions of people, including cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's. Please support the effort to find cures by voting yes on 71. It could save the life of someone you love. At the Robinson's May 15-hour sale, save big on exciting corduroy, Ralph Lauren towels, and every bed in the bag. Use your entire purchase bonus coupons, 10% in home, especially during our preview day Friday, only at Robinson's May. We're talking to newlywed couples whose marriages are already in crisis. They've only been at it a little while, but it's already in trouble. Now, Carl admits he's been lying to his wife, Letitia, since they started dating. And I'm not talking little white lies. Take a look. I'm really tired of being lied to. The lying began when we first started dating, and I told her that me and my ex-wife were divorced. There's days that I actually regret the fact that Carl and I are married. The most hurtful thing Letitia has said to me has been, I never loved you when we got married. Carl led me to believe that he was actually separated from his wife, when in fact he wasn't. And he had lived with me during the entire time that they were supposedly separated. The major lies that I told Letitia have been, one, that I was legally separated, two, that I was divorced. I got a phone call from his wife, finding out they weren't divorced yet and they hadn't been separated either. I tell Carl all the time how he has screwed up my life and why did he drag me down with him. She says things, you're immature, you're a liar, you're an a I didn't find out about Carl having an addiction to porn until after we were married. I had come home after work and found it on the internet. I lied to Letitia about the porn because I felt ashamed. When I looked into Letitia's eyes, and I lied. It was my way of controlling her, so she stayed with me. My greatest fear is this marriage ending up in divorce. I haven't put in my fight yet, and I haven't put in the effort. I hope that we can save this marriage, but I think it's completely destroyed. Dr. Phil, I feel so betrayed by all the lies. Can you please help my husband and I salvage this marriage? Well, I'm not sure that you should. I'm not sure that you want to, because you're saying, can we, can we salvage this marriage? Um, this whole marriage is based on lies and deception, right? Exactly. So you didn't marry who you thought you were marrying. You, I mean, the situation isn't what it appeared to be. So you don't really know Carl yet, do you? I don't you? know. No, I, I mean, don't. does she? I think she does, but at the same time, I don't think she's known me for who the person that I can be. Yeah, are you... Let me ask you something. Are you here to defend what you've done, or are you here to change what you've done? I'm here just to say, put everything that I have on the table and say, look, this is, I want this marriage. I want it to work. You know, I'm not here to defend myself. I'm not here to, uh, you know, defend the things that I did wrong. I'm here to say, look, I did things wrong. I have habits in my life that I want to correct, and I want to be the person that, uh, I, want, I want to be the person that she wants me to be. You know, you wrote me the letter. Correct. All right. And the producers tell me that across the time that they've been working with you, that you, you kind of flip-flop. I mean, at first they say, I, I'm a pathological liar. I, I see that about myself. I know that. I want to change that. And then kind of as time goes by, it's like, well, I'm really not. I just, you know, I don't always know what's important to her, so I don't include it all. Like, you kind of start waffling across time as we get close to the show. And I, that's important to me because you can't change what you don't acknowledge. Now, I'm not waffling along the time. I mean, to me, I have the person who I was when I was married the first time is I am not that same person. I'm a different person. And So you made some progress, you mean? I think I've made progress, but Letitia doesn't think that I've made the progress or she can't see it. And Did you tell her that you couldn't get divorced right away because there is a law in Oklahoma that you can't get divorced until your child is six months old? That I did not tell her. 
Okay, did he tell you that? Yes. Okay. I mean, there was a lot See, this of is a litmus test right here. I mean, do you, is she lying? I, I mean, to me, the, it was six months before we could get divorced. She had to live in a state for six months before we could get divorced. Because I was going to Ohio, she was going to New York, and she had to be in a state of residence for six months. It had nothing to do with the child. It was a state of residence. What did he tell you? I remember something about the child had to be six months old. The baby had to have been born or been living for at least six months before they could get the divorce. Okay, and, and what you just said about state of residence being an issue is a third story I'm hearing, because you're saying he told you the baby had to be six months before Correct. they would grant a divorce. Correct. You're saying it had to do with state of residence. And when the producers talked to you about it, you said, no, it was just because of money. We just didn't have the money to get it done. It took six months to get it well, done. When we're talking so is it money? Is it state of residence? Or the child had to be six months? Now, I, I'm just trying to find out I, here. I, think, I mean, it's not a matter of, I mean, she had asked me why I hadn't gotten divorced. And I told her, well, it was uh, six months. And in the meantime, I'm sitting here thinking, OK, I can do this, you know, get enough money together. I didn't put the effort to put the money together to get the divorce. It was something that, OK, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I procrastinated in doing that. And do, do, do you know that I've spent the last 15 years before I did this show as a litigation consultant? No. I spent all my life in trial. That is a non-responsive answer. <laughs> that is a non-responsive answer to the question. Yeah, I mean, that was just, uh, that's obfuscating. That's just dancing all around it but not answering the question. And I'm trying to pin you down on this because this is a beginning. Look, there comes a point when you have to say, I, I understand why people lie. They, they lie because they think the truth is not good enough. You know, they think, if I, if I tell the truth, that's not exciting enough, that's not enough of what they want to hear, it's not, I, I'm not okay in reality, so I have to create a fantasy to make it all right. So I stretch things, I leave things out, I tell things aren't true. I tell her I'm divorced when I'm not, I tell her I'm separated when I'm not, because I know it's what she wants to hear, and I'm afraid she wouldn't wait on me to get things resolved if I told her the truth. So it's like you don't have enough confidence in yourself to just put it out there and say, here's what it is, take it or leave it. I, you know, if, it's, if you don't like it, I'm sorry, I'll try to fix it, but this is what it is. And that's correct. The whole time that this has been going on, when I lied to her about, you know, being separated or divorced, I was sitting here thinking, okay, just, if I tell her the truth, she's gonna leave. So I was like trying to keep it all in a box and keep everything right. Instead of just coming out and having enough confidence to say, this is what the situation is. If you wanna leave me, okay. Yeah, but then, you know, it's, it's like a kid lying about their grades all six weeks, saying, oh, I did great on my test, I did all my homework. The report card's coming. I mean, I, the report I, card's coming. I mean, this is going to hit the wall. I you agree, know? I mean, I This is going to hit the wall. All right, let, we'll take a break, and when we come back, I want to talk about whether or not Carl can stop the lies and whether Letitia can ever trust him again. We'll be right back. <laughs> and with me here, I'm trying to give you some dots to connect to make this, to give you your best chance of doing something house is just filled with hate. I don't want to have children with Carl. I'm afraid that this is a loveless home and that bringing kids in would just destroy their lives. That's the baby. Right? It's a beautiful go, downtown. Gotta go. 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 Gotta go right now. I've gotta go now. If you've always gotta go, you may have a treatable medical condition. So ask your doctor about Detrol LA, the number one prescribed brand for overactive bladder. It helps control the bladder muscle contractions that have you rushing to the bathroom. Need a break? No, not right now. If you have certain stomach, urinary, or glaucoma problems, you shouldn't take Detrol LA. Common side effects include dry mouth, constipation, abdominal pain, and headache. And I don't have to go right now. Detrol LA. Right now. When you've always got to go. You're getting it down. Oh, yeah, you're getting potty trained. You've got Feel and Learn from Pampers, the new training pant with a special liner that lets you feel when you're wet. You're the man. New Feel and Learn from Pampers. It's Fright Fest at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Come out for terrifying rides, mazes, and shows with one chilling twist after another. Admission is just $23.50 with a coupon from participating Jack-in-the-Box restaurants. 
Six Flags Magic Mountain. It's playtime. My family came to this country to find the American dream. We work hard to make our customers happy. One day I got this letter from a law firm demanding $2,500. The letter didn't claim we broke the law. Just pay the money or go to court. I called a lawyer who said it would cost even more to fight. So, we paid the money even though we'd done nothing wrong. Stop shakedown lawsuits against small family businesses. Yes on 64. Food safety warning, something you might eat tonight could be your last meal. News at 11. Your dinner plate could contain something so disgusting, I can't even hint at what it is. Something in your refrigerator could kill you. To find out what it is, tune in tonight at 11 for a Newsmaker Team exclusive. Blue Cross Med call, I'm a registered nurse. Hi, I was wondering, are there any new food safety warnings I should know about? The power of 24-7 support. The power of Blue. Blue Cross of California. Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil. My son has the biggest mood. I take money, food, and take anything that I can take. Who's the freeloader in your family? I'm going to tell you what I would do if this was my son. Plus, a husband who mooches off his own wife. It's like having a child. I consider myself motivationally challenged. What's that mean? Next, Dr. Phil. Let's say we had a lawn mowing business, and I did all the mowing, and you did all the eating. We wouldn't get along very well. That's Monday. Carl had come to visit me in Oklahoma, and he proposed to me Valentine's Day. Carl had told me that in the state of Oklahoma, you're not allowed to get divorced until six months after a child is born. We're talking about some of the concrete steps many couples have to take in order to survive their first year of marriage. Now, Carl is desperate to stop his habitual lying so he can save his nine-month marriage to Letitia. But she wants to learn how to trust Carl and move past the fact that their relationship had been totally based on lies. Okay, you realize at this point you have no basis for trusting him absolutely. right now. Oh, absolutely. And to do so would be naive and gullible on your part. Correct. This is something he has to earn. Uh, yeah. All right, and the question is, are you going to stay around and give him an opportunity to do that? And that's a decision you'll have to make. But you shouldn't trust him right now because he is not a teller of the truth mm -hmm. at this point. You had this porn problem, right? Correct. Okay, so he told you, I'm not really looking, those are just pop-ups. They just pop up on the screen. Exactly. And I, I, I get rid of them as fast as I can. <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to see them. I get rid of them as fast as I can. And then, and then he went to one counseling session at the church. Correct. And came back and said, I'm, I'm, I'm cured. I'm cured. I'm cured. They said, I'm fine. He's fixed. And you went, okay. No, I told him that I was going to be supportive. I was going to uh -huh. help him in anything that I needed uh -huh. to do, anything that he needed. I was going to try and support him on the issue. If you continue to lie, I will guarantee you this won't work. Because if, she, if he continues to lie to you, you're out of here, right? Absolutely. There comes a point where you just got to say, you know what? I'm just going to lay it out there. They can kill me, but they can't eat me. I'm, I'm just going I'm, you know, to tell you the truth. If you don't like me, then you don't like me. But at this point, I got nothing to lose. It's embarrassing to say you're a pathological or habitual liar, right? Correct. It's not an evil thing. It has to do with you and how much confidence you have in yourself. This doesn't have anything to do with you. He's not lying because of you. It's not that you're some kind of tyrant that he just has to rather lie than face. He's, it's, it's, it's about him. So you shouldn't personalize this. Well, and I still have the feeling, and I ask him to this day, what is it that I've done to you? What have I done to it, make you do this You understand that he was a liar before he met you, correct? Correct. And here's what you've got to do. You've got to make the decision that, you know what? I am going to make a life decision that I'm going to tell the truth. And that doesn't mean that everything you say will then be okay since you told the truth. Oh, I understand that. You still have to deal with the accountability that anyone has to deal with, with the consequences of their actions. And you've got to decide to trust yourself enough that your best chance is reality. If you were looking at porn, tell the truth. If you looked at it last night, tell the truth. Tell the truth. You can't change what you don't acknowledge. You can't fix what you don't have on the radar screen. And you need to do that really, really soon. This is why I'm here. I'm saying, hey, look, this is what I'm willing to do. You know, I don't want this, you know, leech, 
you know, I want to get rid of it so I can have a good marriage, so I can be the person who I want to be. I know it's not going to be easy, but I'm, sending, I'm telling her, you know, this is what I'm willing to do. And just can you start by believing me that that's what I'm trying to do, or at least even if I have to go over it 100 times? Okay, let me answer for her no. <laughs> no, she can't start by believing you. What she can do is start by observing you, correct? correct. Actions speak louder than words. If what you say at this point, because I've been through your whole history, and, and the way you can tell if he's lying is if his lips are moving, okay? <laughs> That's for sure. Everything you've said in the past, there's been very little truth in there, right? True. That's how you could tell. If his lips were moving, he was lying, right? So what she has to do is watch what you do now. You have to create a new history. If, if everything you do today is congruent with what you say you're going to do, then you've got a day of positive history there, Carl. And if everything you, you say you're going to do tomorrow, you do, you have two days of positive history. And then three and four, and then days turn into weeks, weeks turn into months, months turn into years, and before you know it, you're looking back saying, you know, I was really immature in selling myself short then because I'm good enough as I am. I don't need to enhance it. I don't need to lie. I don't need to hide. I put myself on the line. Because I'll guarantee you, she didn't fall in love with you because of the stories you told. I guarantee that, too. She fell in love with you because of what she saw behind the stories, because of elements of your personality that you found appealing, correct? Correct. Because you're, he's not a bad person. He's just not a teller of the truth. Mm -hmm. and, and you have to demonstrate it. You, you see, you, you can't believe a liar but you can watch what they do and see that they begin to generate a new history and a new trust. All right, like I said, I'm willing to do whatever it takes and willing to start as soon as possible. If he continues to lie, you need to get out of this. And if he begins to demonstrate some reliability in his behavior, then you take it one day at a time. Sounds good. We'll be right back. DrPhil.com brought to you in part by... A Cinderella Story is coming to DVD. Including a Hillary Duff music video. A Cinderella Story. You can own it Tuesday on DVD. Ready PG. Travel consideration provided by guests of the Dr. Phil Show stay at the Renaissance Hollywood Hotel, the destination for luxury and comfort. Just steps away from Hollywood and Highland and the star studded Walk of Fame. Try different tender and juicy entrees every night during Carver's Choice at Hometown Buffet, like our brand new beef brisket. Home style, your style. Minutes away at 5, flu shot frenzy, people going to the extreme to get the vaccine, but at what risk? Plus, why the local supply just took another hit. Then he's boosted academics, decreased campus violence, and helped low-income students. So, why are hundreds of parents fighting to get a local principal fired? And it's no secret who she's voting for. Hillary Clinton stumping here in the Southland what she told local voters. And winter is making an early arrival. Part of your weekend's going to be wet. Don't miss my live 10 point Doppler forecast just ahead. Can't touch this. It's Toyota's untouchable deals. Can't touch this. The 05 Toyotas are here. Can't touch this. Get a zero drive off lease on a new 05 Camry. Then pay only $259 a month for 36 months. Can't touch this. Or buy a new Camry with 1-9 financing. Choose 500 back or 3-9 financing for up to 60 months on a new Corolla. The 05 Toyota you want is here now. Can't touch this. Get an untouchable deal at your Toyota dealer today. Can't touch this. just pretending your new furniture has arrived? You should have come to Living Spaces, where everything in our 80,000 square foot furniture showroom is in stock, ready for same day delivery. Huge selection, everyday low prices, what are you waiting for? Living Spaces, at the 15 Freeway and Foothill, under the giant flag. As an ER nurse, I've seen lots of emergencies, and today, we have one in California. Emergency rooms are overflowing with working families whose companies have cut their health benefits. They can't afford to see their own doctors, so they wind up here at taxpayers' expense. Proposition 72 makes sure that large and medium-sized companies cover their employees and that workers pay no more than 20% of the premiums. Help us treat this emergency. Vote yes on 72. Visa presents Moving Out. <laughs> 
Now through October 31st only, the Pantages Theater. Today in L.A., news, traffic, weather, period. If you are in the L.A. area and want to be in the audience, call 323-461-PHIL or email us at drphil.com. Okay, I, I really appreciate you guys coming in here today because you're, you're newlyweds that represent a lot of people. Some of them have these problems after years. You guys have them coming in early. Now, uh, you guys, you got to redefine this marriage. I mean, you got to start with a whole different focus. We're going to work on it day by day. Quick audience poll. If you think these guys are going to make the changes and have a chance, raise your hand. Mm. They are uninspired <laughs> by your comments. Uh, I've told these guys that she needs to bury Julian in her mind and heart, and they need to put more energy and effort into taking care of themselves physically and getting into their marriage. If you think they're going to make an effort to do that, raise your hand. Oh, better job. <laughs> okay, better job, better job. If you think he's going to quit lying and start telling the truth, and they're going to have a chance, raise your hand. That's like five out of the whole room, and you didn't raise your hand. You got to, I mean, are you committed to this? I mean, if I wasn't committed, I would not be here. He did write the letter, which could be totally manipulative. He did come here, which could be totally manipulative. He could have seen a therapist, all to just kind of try to smooth things over. But does he put it into action? And you need to focus on his actions. And if they're not there, you need to acknowledge that you are in a bad situation and move on. That's just my advice. I don't ask people to substitute my judgment for their own, but I feel like I should tell you what I think. All right, you'll find more advice and concrete steps for making it through the first year of marriage. You're going to see it has a lot to do with reasonable expectations and a commitment at a mature level. So go to drphil.com if you want to take a look at that. We'll see you next time. Thanks for being here. Thanks, guys. See you all. See you all. The biggest thing was hearing what Dr. Phil had to say. He has kind of the same viewpoint that I do, which is if there's not a change anytime soon, any dramatic change, then it's over. I can't live with someone who's going to continue to lie to me for the rest of my life. I'm ready to change what I've been doing for so long. This is a life change for you. I know. I mean, if you... That should be scary for you, just the fact that you have to change your entire life and your way of being.